Okay, this was the next step that I wanted to show you. Uh, I actually did it because it was faster than it was for me trying to uh, do it live on the lathe. It was just taking too much time. It was a slow process. Uh, if you remember correctly on the last video, what you saw was you saw this stock here and these rings were, I had cut, uh, cut, I plunged in with a cutoff tool and I made each individual ring. Uh, I think I did nine of them and knowing I was going to go in later and ch ch pan it, which meant come in from the end with a cutoff tool made ground just especially to cut the rings the right thickness. Here's another one. I have, I have a bunch of these. I have not, uh, I believe nine, seven, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven. So what I did was, um, I did come in with a cutter, which I have set up in the, in the chuck right now. Let me just show you. And there's the cutter and it's set up so it's it's got a slight radius on this side so when you're trepanning in from the end you got to use tailstock and you end up cutting the ring free and of course this side's got a radius on it because it's got to match the radius so the bottom of the cutter doesn't hit and it's a little slow I did get a little chatter I played with different speeds and I had to put a special grind on the end of the cutter and that reduced it and it wasn't too unreasonable, but it was slow. Uh, and that's why I didn't do a recording of it. So after I cut them, what I found out is I ended up with a little lip on the edge of the ring. Uh, because when the cutter came through, it would stop, it would cut. And it wouldn't remove that lip. So what I ended up doing was I put in a, um, I'll show you right here. Uh, I wanted to clean up the um, ID of the uh, rings. So I put in this uh, clamping on a, um, so I can clamp on the ring itself. Let me move that out of the way. So I was able to push the ring into here and draw it back with my draw bar and the lathe. And then I could finish up the inside actually using the same tool and just remove the lip of the inside. And then I was able to mic it, and if they were a little bit, a um, little bit thicker than I wanted, I was able to remove a several thousandths if it needed to be. They're basically 0 0.120. Uh, that's the thickness of the ring itself. So I was able to clean them up, and um, that was all done. And let me show you the rings. They're all here. These are the. These are all the rings that I made. I made more than I need. I only need four, but when I was cutting, I figured let me just do them all in case uh, I have one that uh, breaks on me. My next step now is to take this ring and I'm gonna be filing a notch in the ring. Uh, right, I'll be filing a very thin notch in the ring. And then I'm gonna use an expander to put inside the ring and expand it and since this is going to be the weak spot the ring, ring should fracture right at that file mark you don't want to go too deep three corner file about 10 strokes will put enough of a nick so when i expand the ring and i'm actually going to use a tailpipe expander uh some the thinner rings you can actually put in a vise and clamp it in a vise and then hit it I've seen guys do it. You clamp it in the vise like that and you hit it here with a hammer and it fractures. But these rings are much too wide. You're not gonna, it's not gonna happen. And I saw one other guy made a jig and he used in a press in his uh, arbor press and he, it was basically a long taper. And he uh, pressed it down until the ring actually fractured where the file mark was. Well, um, I don't have a, um, uh, I don't have a jig made up and I decided well I'm going to use a tailpipe expander but basically that's used for stretching uh, exhausts out so you can slide one inside the other so that's the game plan the game plan was to file these 
Um, I ordered it, didn't come in yet. You know, the tailpipe expander will be put in place, and I'll use a wrench to tighten up the tailpipe expander, and that should cause the ring to fracture. Uh, it takes a little more time, but uh, I don't feel like machining a jig. And at that point in time, we'll go to the next step, which I'll show you how I heat treat the uh, rings. What will occur is the formula is the diameter of the ring. You take 15% of the diameter of the ring, and that's how much you, you put a spacer in here to expand the ring. And then use an oxyacetylene torch, and you get the ring to glow. Of course, with a jig on, I will show that. And when the ring drops off the jig, you let it cool slowly, and the ring now is... Uh, got tension on it to stay open and that should put tension on the walls of the cylinder so that's where we stand right now with them uh, I'm sorry I didn't show you me cutting them away but that would have been a very boring video all right well you'll see the next one